One of the first video games ever created was Pong. Now, it's a simple game, but if you had to build it from scratch, how long do you think it would take? Using one of the new custom GPTs, I was able to create this in under two minutes. So, no doubt you know about ChatGPT, but have you played around with the new custom GPTs in the GPT Builder? This is where you can define a new set of rules for how it should operate and can enclose it for a particular use case. Here I'm building one that writes simple, idiomatic Go code. So back to the Pong example. So I tried out the top rated custom GPT on the marketplace, and it was one called Grimoire that's loaded up with a bunch of uh, pre-canned content and I think some custom actions. And one of the suggestions that it had was to create a game of Pong. So I said, let's do it. And it first created a plan of attack and validated that that's what I wanted. And when I said yes, it then just gave me the code in three different code blocks, as you might expect, for the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so I just pasted that into CodePen, and it just worked. So overall, that's a pretty pleasant experience. Though, to be honest, not too distant from just a normal chat GPT session. So I wanted to explore whether or not these tools are actually at the point where it's going to change the way that we operate, or if it's just a nice little productivity hack, or if it's just a waste of time. So I started by throwing in a softball with a to-do app. Now there's a million of those sample to-do list apps out there, so I figured this would be a pretty simple one to accomplish. And well, it did it pretty well. You know, it's not pretty, but it got the job done and I really didn't have to give it any instructions. So I'd call that a win. So the next one of these custom GPTs that caught my eye was the Flowbyte one. Now Flowbyte is a component library that's built on top of Tailwind CSS. And I've used it on a couple of projects in the past. So I've got experience with it. I know it's pretty good. And this GPT was actually created by the Flowbyte team. So I figure it's probably gonna be pretty good. So Flowbyte GPT has all of these, or it's got a few kind of canned things here. So let's go with build a landing page with the hero and feature section. All right, so it's essentially figured out what it wants to do, and then it's given me this code block. So let's just directly paste it in, see what it does. Welcome to our service. Feature one, feature two, feature three. I mean, it's not the most inspired set up, but I really didn't ask it for much, so I guess it's not a big deal. I didn't really give it a whole lot to go off of, did I? So let's give it a more fair attempt. Okay, so create a landing page for an AI website builder with a nav bar, a hero section, a feature section, and a footer. I want the styling to be futuristic and techy. Actually, let's add in call to action and a footer. So this is a lot more. Let's see what it comes up with. All right, so this is what I came up with. I mean, I guess it's just a reminder. If you go back to Flowbyte and you go to their blocks. So this is kind of like the prefabricated versions. So, I mean, if we look at these, you see what's possible. And it's a lot more interesting than this. <laughs> uh, well, can't blame it on the flow by guys for trying this GPT thing. Would I use this? No, I don't think I would. I would just use Flowbyte and their blocks and docs. Well, that one didn't go quite as planned. So let's try something even more ambitious. There's one that's called Screenshots of Code. And yeah. Well, let's see how it handles it. I'm giving it an example from Twitter Bootstrap which is a pretty simple page. You've got a little table here. You've got some cards, header, nav bar, footer. Pretty simple, um, but also easy to get wrong. So let's see what it comes up with. All right, well, ChatGPT really scuffed this, but let's just see if the site itself is actually any good. Okay. How does it look? So this is rather interesting because on the one hand, it doesn't really look anything like the original. Also, it completely missed the nav bar. That being said, it actually did a pretty serviceable job overall as far as just creating something. So I'm not really sure what to take away from this one. Did it deliver on its promise of screenshots of code? 
technically it has come up with code. So great success. So, I mean, I guess overall that one was fine. Not the best, not the worst. Let's try one that says that it can just create a website from a single sentence. All right. Design a personal blog for a tech YouTuber who wants to post snippets and videos. All right, it's created it. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> okay, so not the most exciting site in the world. Hmm. Okay, so maybe just design stuff in general doesn't translate well into AI. That would be understandable. So let's go back to where things were working well. The game of Pong was perfect. How about we'll try another staple, which is Conway's Game of Life. So I'll pass it into this new one. Let's see if we can build Conway's Game of Life. Well, I started to get a bit concerned here as it was spouting out about Django, which Django being a backend framework really doesn't make sense in the context of Conway's Game of Life, but I was interested to see where it was gonna go. Okay. Hang on a second. So is this expecting that I'm going to make a post request for every game, <laughs> for every tick or, you know, whatever iteration you want to call it. And as I'd come to expect, things crapped out at the end and I couldn't actually download the zip. So it was suggesting that I manually copy and paste all the code blocks of which there were many and they were overlapping. So I decided I wasn't going to do that. So that, didn't work super well. <laughs> How about something a bit more conventional? How about just a basic blog app? That's like the basic CRUD app that everyone builds. Surely it can handle this. Develop a personal blogging system. Let's do it using Go. All right, we're using Jin. Good call. Gorm and SQLite. Honestly, that's a good stack. Going for a classic MVC approach. Not bad. All right, and let me follow along with this. Let's just see what happens, eh? All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and scaffold out all those files that it proposed. Very interesting, so it created those files and let me download them. But now for the models file, just gonna give me the code directly. That's cool. That's cool, just keep me, keep me guessing. Models, paste this directly. So now, actually if I run this, this should actually instantiate a new database, I guess, right? Yeah, here we go. It's complaining about the, the C bindings, but that's all right. Duplicate column, of course. So that's one little issue there. So let's go ahead and remove the blog DB and we'll go to blog and we will remove created at because if we go into um, the model, you can see that comes with created at. So no point in having that twice. All right, so that's working. We've got our blog.db. That's nice. I've hit my cap. <laughs> I guess I'll have to resume this later. Well, it turns out I shouldn't have bothered. For some reason, it decided that it was gonna do a mix of JSON endpoints and template rendered pages, but there was gonna be absolutely no connectivity between them. So those JSON endpoints were never gonna to be touched and the actual form pages weren't rendered by anything. All right, I think I may be beating a dead horse at this point. So the question still stands. Is this actually useful? And I have to say, I think for most cases, it probably isn't. There's this level where if you're a beginner, you're gonna end up being taught some bad things, bad practices, and that's really not where you wanna start your development career. And if you're an expert, you're just gonna get pissed off because it's giving you all sorts of crap code. So I think the main place where this is useful is if you're an expert or you know, you're intermediate at programming, and you accept the fact that it's probably not giving you good code, but it's going to expose you to possibly new ideas, it still might be useful. And truth be told, I think all of these examples that came out of these, out of the GPT marketplace are kind of misguided. It's trying to do everything for you. Whereas I think the real value in these tools, at least as they currently stand, is to supplement your existing code. Let's say that I have a function that's already working, but I want to refactor how it's operating it's gonna do a lot better of a job with that than trying to build the entire context around an entire application. So I think learning how to use it effectively is a useful skill, though 
tools like Copilot are oftentimes more effective because it's just there directly where you need it and you don't need to worry about this copying back and forth. And let's not forget, there is the constant joy of working with ChatGPT. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.